First thing I'm gonna do is we're just going to check out the actual email that I sent out today. So um, we're doing stock replacement, the tactical volatility strategy. It does need to be adjusted today. We do these regular rebalances only under the conditions that the, the actual trade we have on has been open a while and the number of days to expiration in this trade has reduced to a point where we need to push it out further. So we actually got into this trade on the 9th, I believe, of March. And so it's been open a while. And typically, if it's open three weeks to a month, that's when we would start looking to rebalance and push it to the next month. In this case, as I'll show shortly, there isn't one for the immediate following month, but that doesn't matter. We'll just push it out a little bit further. But uh, the reason that we do stock replacement in this one individual strategy, it does have several advantages over doing things directly with the ETFs. So there's two ways to short volatility with the ETFs essentially. You can either hold the inverse ETFs, which would be currently we only have one. We have the SVXY at a 0.5 times leverage factor. And nothing wrong with that. We use it in the aggressive vol strategy. It's a great ETF to hold. The other way that people could potentially do it is to actually short the long volatility ETPs, probably VXX because UVXY is leveraged. You wouldn't want to be shorting leverage. I don't like shorting anything really. I mean, unless you absolutely have to, but there's really no situation where you're forced to short something. The problem there is that shorting does have unlimited loss to the downside. And while it's probably unlikely that it would lose more than 100% in a single day, you know, days like October 1987, they're certainly not out of the question. So you want to be careful. You want to just be mindful that perhaps once every five or 10 years, something really terrible might actually hit you. And you don't want to be holding the wrong trade structure because we're just trying to short volatility and we just want to do it in the most efficient way possible. So stock replacement has several advantages over both of those other methods of either long inverse products or short the long products. The first advantage is that you can only, and this applies to all trading, of course, you can only ever lose the capital that you put up for the trade. So for the long ETF, if you buy the VX or the SVXY, for example, let's say some October 87 event did happen, it's possible that it could lose a very significant amount of that money. It's 0.5 leverage factor these days, so I don't imagine that it's going to approach 100%. It could technically, but the point is that with option trading, you're actually only putting out a partial capital allocation. Because if we look right now, at the trade that we're taking, for example, this next trade, we're taking this 14 strike all the way out in September. So right now, the VXX is trading at 1077. So if you were to buy 100 shares of that, that's going to cost you $1,077 to hold that contract. And if it, sorry, this is the VXX. Let me just show the SVXY. 48, same concept applies. It's going to cost the full value of the ETF to allocate that capital. But... Now we can go back to the VXX. When we're doing the VXX trade, you can see here the premium we're paying is only $5 and say 30 cents. $5 and 30 cents per contract, which represents 100 shares of the underlying. So in this case, we're only putting a capital outlay of $530 per every roughly $1,100 that it would cost to hold the ETF outright. So worst case scenario, October 1987, it happens again. All of the volatility products will feel that, but the person who bought the options, you can only lose the $5.30 you bought, and that's per 100 shares. So the max loss in this case, no matter what happens, would be 530 divided by the 1100. The max loss would be 48%. SVXY could lose 100, VXX could you know do whatever it does, but the option trader can only lose what they actually put into the trade and the capital outlay for options will always be lower than the ETF itself. So there is some built-in safety there. You may not think it's valid because perhaps you don't think that one of those events is ever gonna happen again, and that's fine. Everybody can have their opinion, but it is nice to know that the maximum loss under the worst possible scenario is typically anywhere from about 30 to 60%. You won't ever be able to lose the full capital because we're gonna hold roughly half of our money in actual cash because we don't need it. The options are cheaper. The second advantage that stock replacement has is it has a built-in margin for error because of what's called being Vega positive. So Vega is the option Greek. 
can see it here in my platform. For this contract that we're highlighting there, the vega for the trade is 0 0.03. You can see that's a positive number. What this means is that if volatility rises, this option contract actually makes a little bit of profit because of that long vega. Now you can imagine what would happen if we got caught with a big volatility spike, our trade is gonna lose money. This is a long put option several months out in advance. So if the volatility spikes in the market, we will lose money. This is a short volatility trade. However, because we have a little bit of positive vega there, our loss won't be as severe as say the holding the SVXY, for example, which when you're holding an ETF, you don't factor into account all the option Greeks. There is no Vega with that trade. It just, the price goes to what it goes and you're subject to all of those losses. Being positive Vega, it does allow for a little bit of insulation there and it can offset some of the losses when you get caught in one of those big spikes. So the tactical volatility strategy, for example, on a big volatility spike, probably will lose less money than the aggressive vol strategy that uses the SVXY. And the reason for that, again, because there is a little bit of positive vega that's working to our advantage to really mitigate those risks a little bit more. The third reason, it allows us to custom design our risk tolerance, basically the exposure we have to the underlying VXX. And that is done through Delta. So that's another option, Greek. Delta measures how sensitive an option is with respect to changes in the underlying product. And it's basically based on a change of $1 in the underlying product, how much is that going to affect our, our trade, our option contract. So you can see the product that, or the contract that we're going to be getting into is a minus 0 0.48 Delta factor. Essentially, you can look at this as if the VXX goes up $1, our trade will realize about half of that movement, right? Our delta's pretty close to 0.5, right? 0.48. So we are roughly 0 0.48 times leveraged on this new trade. The trade that we are moving out of, which was the June trade, when we opened that one, we were doing the 18 contract. When we opened it, it was a 0.51 delta factor. So it's a roughly 0 0.5. As that goes on, of course, our delta has been increasing. So it's now 0.69 it's a little bit more of a leveraged trade than it was when we started, but it's definitely a little bit more than the current one we're getting into. And options allows you to do that. So you can choose any one of these strike prices depending on the Delta factor. So if you really, really wanted to get pretty strong with it, you could start finding stronger Deltas. Now, unfortunately, like I mentioned, the option strings aren't really filled in right now. You can see there's a pretty big gap between May, June, and then all the way out to September. So you can't really choose those higher deltas if we go this far out, but you can see you can get as high as a 0.7, which means essentially in a roundabout way, all things being held equal, that would move 70% of the VXX. So just remember that the SVXY is a 0.5 times leverage factor. So this trade we're getting into at a 0.48 delta, it's roughly the same thing as buying the SVXY. Very, very close. And I'm gonna show a calculation in a second of our previous trade from March 9th up until today to sort of show that point. But let's move on to the fourth advantage of stock replacement. And this may or may not affect you, but it is very valid, is that stock replacement may allow people who have been restricted from trading the ETFs directly to still participate in the short volatility trade. This is very, very important, especially there's two cases where this might be very relevant. The one, if you're an American, for example, and you're trading in these uh, tax sheltered accounts, there are some brokers and some account structures that may not allow you to trade certain ETFs, either ETFs or ETNs, certain structures, they just flag different regulations and you may not actually be able to do that. The other example is if you are a European, you can go onto my website, go under articles and type MIFID. This is the famous MIFID II regulations in the European economic area. Essentially what this means is it's very restrictive to Europeans trading US-based ETFs because now based on these rules, every ETF that is issued has to have basically a translation, what is called a KID document, a translation for that country that it's going into. And of course, they have to jump through a bunch of regulatory hoops. Vast majority of ETFs don't have that, which means 
that a lot of Europeans can't actually trade any US-based ETFs at all. Not even things like the SPY or the MDY. I mean, forget about volatility, they can't even trade regular ETFs. So if you are one of those people, of course, ETF replacements based in Europe, right? I have several examples of replacing, here's stocks, here's replacing bonds. There's some that can replace gold. So you can do replacements that way. Or number two, stock replacement. This method that I'm talking about does actually require, does actually allow certain people who are otherwise restricted to go ahead and short volatility anyway. And you can do that through options because for whatever reason, options are still allowed. Apparently they don't need kid documents. You can still get approval for trading options. So just something to consider, won't affect everybody, but it is important to know. Now the one disadvantage, of course, this is investing. Nothing is with full advantage, no disadvantage. There's always that trade-off, the risk reward, the advantage disadvantage. The one disadvantage to stock replacement is that they are theta negative. Going back to our Greeks again, we are looking at theta here, and you can see the trade that we're going to be doing. You see this negative number? It's not very much, minus a penny, right? Minus 0 0.01. It's not that much, but that little bit of theta decay will build over time. So the way that theta works, let me go to my face here so I can gesture here. The way theta works is as it approaches expiration, theta gets stronger. So you can imagine, I should have a chart here, but I don't have one open. Essentially, theta will accelerate towards expiration. So you can imagine in the beginning, 100 days out, it's pretty flat, minus 0 0.01, it's really insignificant. But as you approach expiration, get to about 45 or 50 days, it starts to decay a little bit faster. And then you get to maybe 20 days, inside 10 days, it really starts to go. And the last few days, that theta is quite significant. So what we want to do, because that's our only downside, is that we are theta negative and we will bleed a little bit of capital every day. All we have to do is keep pushing our trades out to where that theta is more flat, right? It's less punishing for our trade. So that's what we're doing. We opened this trade when it had about 100 days to expiration. It's been very successful. It's made a bunch of money, which is good to see, of course, but we are 74 days out. It's about time to push that further. And like I said, you know, in a perfect world, I would probably like to push it to about 100 to 130 days, but we just get what we get. Right now, it's only the September contract, 165 days out. So no big deal. That's the one we're gonna do. We still get a 0.48 delta factor. The reason I'm doing a fairly low delta is because the trade has been so profitable. What you don't want to do is have a month of really solid profit and then increase the leverage factor of your trade. If anything, you wanna reduce it over time because trading is trading. Not everything goes up forever. Not everything goes down forever. You kinda of wanna scale a little bit and don't increase your leverage when it's less and less likely that the market can continue doing this, right? At some point, this is gonna slow down, it has to. The market can't be going up 1.5% every day. So that's why I'm selecting the lower delta there. But it's still Vega positive, which is nice. We get that little bit of extra insulation if we get a volatility spike. And the theta is now very minimal. It's, it's very far out in time. So that's essentially why we do stock replacement. Four major advantages that in my opinion, make it my favorite strategy, right? The tactical volatility that uses the options. I think that's probably the best way to do it. I even have a YouTube video out there. I think it was called the four best ways to short volatility. And I'm talking about vertical spreads, shorting them directly, which is of course is one of the worst, not as bad as selling naked calls on the options, but um, pretty bad. And then it progressively goes up to the very best method, which is this stock replacement method. In my opinion, it is the best method. Um, but that one downside, that theta, let's try to quantify our last trade before I actually go in and execute this trade. I'll just show you how I do this adjustment. It's, it's actually quite easy. But the first thing that I wanted to do is just quantify that little theta factor. So remember I said the trade that we opened had a delta of about 0.51 and it has progressively increased. So the way that I record these trades for the official performance is essentially this first line that you're looking at is the price that I bought it at. The second line will be the price that I sell it at. And then there's a multiplier because of course, 
We are reserving the full capital. It's not a 100% trade. Remember, it doesn't cost that much up front. So we have to adjust for that, that, that we're actually not taking a full value trade here. So this is how it's calculated. Essentially, and I don't know what your software looks like, but this is Thinkorswim from TD Ameritrade. You can go into what here is called Thinkback. Yours might be called Time Machine or something. They'll give it some clever name that basically you can go back in time and you can see the prices. So if we go back to the day we opened this trade and we highlight my trade, you can see it says the average price was 572.5. I always round, like I round so it, it hurts the trade. I never round to my advantage. I round to my disadvantage, of course. When you're recording performance, you always want to default to the bad one. So I bought it at the 5.73. I rounded up. When I'm closing it, which is right now, what is the current price right now? So this is the trade. It's 787.5. So I would round down when I'm selling it to 787. Forget my phone there. I'm going to use this calculator so you can see it. Um, so we're looking at 787 minus 573 divided by what we started at, which was 573. So this trade itself has made that much profit, 37.35% profit. Now, like I said, that's not pure profit. 37.3, we do have a multiplying effect here where I have to actually multiply that by 0.3879. So we will do the 37.3 times 0.3879. And our actual realized profit based on the capital that we put into this trade, our trade is up four, 14 point, let's say 14.5, just to make it easy, over the last roughly three weeks, little over three weeks. So pretty good run here. Um, very successful trade. Uh, obviously happy with that. We've seen some significant vol crush recently. So that's good, 14.5. If we look at the 0 0.5 times leverage factor, SVXY, for that same time period, remember this is a 0 0.5 times profit or 0 0.5 times leverage factor ETF. It was at 41.84 and now it's at 48.42. So 48.42 minus 41.84 divided by where we started, 41.84. And over the same time period, this trade, just holding SVXY straight up, made 15.72, right? Remember the stock replacement trade made 14.5. This one made 15.72. That little difference, right? Let's call it a percent and a half. Uh, it's a little bit less than a percent and a half, 1.2%. That little difference is essentially what you could attribute to the theta decay. That's what happened with this trade. Probably some Vega decay, Theta decay. That's what stock replacement does. We get all those really good advantages, and it's definitely worth doing, in my opinion, at least for one of the strategies. People can mix up what they do. If you do certain strategies that do verticals, sometimes we sell the VXX put options. Sometimes we do stock replacement. Sometimes we hold the SVXY. We're mixing it all up. But that little gap, that 1.2% gap, is essentially what we're trying to avoid. If we leave this trade open for too long and it gets within 50, within 30, approaching expiration, that gap will widen substantially. That theta will start to accelerate on us. So that's essentially what we're doing. It's a very effective way to capitalize on the movements of the VXX at whatever delta factor we design. We can custom design that. And then we just have to watch out for that theta decay and push it forward. But we get all those advantages. That's the thing. We we reduced our maximum loss, which everybody remembers Volpocalypse in Feb 2018. Um, we can't overstate how punishing that would have been. Now, I wasn't holding short vol during that period. But if you were, you would have definitely preferred to be holding it through the options. Um, and also, we get that Vega boost. So if we get hit, let's say tomorrow, Nothing saying we can't wake up tomorrow and the VXX is up 50%, right? And short vol gets absolutely devastated. That could happen. Uh, the option will lose less money than SVXY. And regulation-wise, more people can actually use the options. So it's worth paying that 1.2%, in my opinion, to get all of those advantages. So now 
Last thing that I will do, just to wrap this all up for you, is I'm actually going to execute this trade just to show people that, look, I wrote a fairly long wordy blog section today on the whole stalker placement. Remember there's a part, two part series. You can review that and it's all in video format if you don't wanna read this, but it all looks pretty long, right? Long winded, there's some math there, but actually it's pretty simple. So here's the trade that we currently have open. The first thing that I'm going to do is sell this. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get the uh, increased price. It's actually gonna probably clip down the other way. So you can see the mid is 785. Hopefully this goes quickly. I don't wanna sit for too long. So now that trade is done. And now again, it is just like a normal trade, except one additional step. So this shouldn't take people very long to do. Essentially what we're doing here, because this strategy for our portfolio is a 20% allocation, all I have to do is take 20% of the net liquidation value of the account. So we'll do one, just 190 times 0.5. I'm going to, no, times 0.2, sorry. 190 times 0.2. I'm going to be allocating $38,000. So all I need to do is that one additional step when I'm sizing my actual trade, I just look at the VXX. I typically round upwards to the nearest 50 cents or a dollar. So let's just use it as 11. $1,100 is our multiplier. So I just take my 38,000. This is how many contracts I'm gonna buy. Divided by that 1,100. What's wrong with my fingers today? And I'm going to be got buying 34.5 contracts. Obviously you always want to round down to the nearest full contract. Can't buy half contracts in options. So 34 contracts, that's it. That's really all I need to know. Now I find my strike price. It's in all of the emails. In this case, it's the September 14 VXX put. Remember I am, ah, I lost it in my brain. It was 34, sorry. Um, I'm going to be buying 34 contracts of this 14. Buy a single, I'm gonna open the contracts here, say 34 of them. And again, this is when the pricing comes in. VXX is very liquid, of course. We only trade the most liquid ETFs and options at VTS. So you'll never really have a problem executing trades. But let's go ahead and try to get that mid price. Mid price is 530. You can just check to make sure that everything kind of looks correct, but um, I'm sure it's right. And it went through right away. I. I could, and this is something that always comes up with people, should you nickel and dime things? Um, the thing about options trading is, you can see how I put 530 as the mid price, and it was kind of in between about a nickel there. You can see the execution I got was 527. The options, because these are happening with very fast computers, of course, they're matching up the contracts behind the scenes anyway. So sitting behind your computer and waiting for execution fill prices isn't really necessary. I know a lot of people think that you should, you know, you try to get the absolute best price, put it up five cents and sit and wait for an hour and see if you get it. The problem with that is that on a short-term time horizon, trading is 50-50. I don't know in the next 30 minutes whether the VXX is gonna be up or down. So if I, I just go for the mid price, if I try to go for that one little tick, maybe five cents extra, I'm going to need the VXX to go down a little bit in the next 30 minutes. Do I know that's going to happen? No, it's probably equally likely that it just goes up in the next 30 minutes and then I'm going to get five cents worse. So I always just assume that when I'm sitting at my computer, the price that I'm staring at in front of me, that is the price. I'm not going to try to wait 20 minutes and see if I can you know, predict the market and get the best fill. It is what it is when I'm sitting there. And then again, like you saw, the computer will give you the best price available in that moment. So I got 527, there it is. I'm in the trade for 527. And that's it, that's a stock replacement trade. So that took me 20 minutes to talk about, but the actual trade, once you know how to do this, it took less than two minutes, right? You just calculate your net liquidation value, divide by five or whatever allocation size you do. That's my personal portfolio. I do 20%, um, but you can do whatever percentage you want. Obviously I suggest you kind of stick close to, to what I'm doing because it's my portfolio. But, uh, and then that one additional step, just take the VXX price, multiply it by a hundred, and that's your multiplier. Divide your 
capital allocation, divide by that 1100 because the VXX is roughly 11 bucks. There it is. Really, really not difficult to do. And um, while uh, if you're a member of VTS, you will see me go through this quite regularly, probably two months from now, I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. I'm gonna show all the new people in the community how to do this. You will know that when you see these option trades, no matter how wordy my blogs get, this is a one to two minute trade. Don't be intimidated by it, it's super easy. Option trading is just as easy as stock trading. It just allows a whole myriad of options for people. You can structure your leverage factor, you can do different exposures, different, you know, you can use the VXX to trade a half leverage or a one and a half leverage, a two times leverage. If you wanna revive the old TVIX yourself, you can do that using options. There's a lot of things you can do. And there's built-in risk management there as well. So I love it. Um, I've been doing it for a long time. So for me, it, it all makes perfect sense. But as I compared those two trades, our tactical volatility strategy made 14 and a half percent in the last three weeks. Aggressive vol made what, 15 and a half. It's basically a tie. Um, maybe good to have both. I trade both, of course, equal allocation, but uh, you can choose which one you like better, which matches your situation. I think most people shy away from the options. And if I were to make a guess, I would say most people in the VTS community probably use the SVXY and the aggressive vol strategy, but um, we get some decent volume going through there. Um, you know, we get about three, 4,000 contracts being traded well, you know, within an hour or two of when I send out my signal. So it's, uh, there are some people doing it, but I would imagine there's many more people using the SVXY. That's kind of why I do these things. It's just to show people that you don't have to use the SVXY just because you don't know how to use options. It's not that difficult. Um, nothing wrong with SVXY, but don't default because you don't know how to do it. Um, ask me, rewatch the videos, watch the stock replacement series I did on YouTube. Um, you can do this. Trust me, you can do this. Thank you so much for watching the video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go check out my website right here. There's tons of articles and videos on there, as well as a free trial to join the VTS investing community. What have you got to lose? Come see how I personally navigate these unruly markets. See you next time.